Maybe you think you have a certain good level in French before you move to France and then you actually go there and you're like, I don't understand the thing. Hello guys, so welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a new video. So as you can guess from the title, today we're going to talk about getting into Sorbonne and how I personally got into Sorbonne and in general what is it like to attend university in Paris. So if you haven't seen before, I actually do have a first part of this video up on my channel that I posted, I believe last year. Um, that video is really practical and it was a lot of step-by-step -step explanation of what you need to do exactly to get into Sorbonne. So I talk a lot about the application process, what type of visa you need, what do you have to do exactly based on your nationality. In order to continue this series of getting into Sorbonne and like just in general being a uni student in Paris, I wanted to share some more, I guess like um, less practical and more real world examples and my tips and advice for you if you're looking into getting into university in Paris, France. So if you don't know anything about me, I am currently in my third year of communication studies at Sorbonne. I moved to Paris two years ago to study at university and um, I'm currently in my final year. I'm in my third year, so I thought that it would be okay for me to spill some tea and uh, share some information about what it is like to actually go to Sorbonne. And we're also going to talk a little bit about learning French, as this video is kindly sponsored by Lingoda, the online language school. Also, just before we start, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. I like this video if you feel like doing that. And without any further ado, let's get into the video. So straight away, the first topic that I would like to address in this video is speaking French because I get a lot of questions from you guys on a daily basis asking me things like is it okay if I don't speak French can I still get into university in Paris or how good I have to be in French in order to be able to get into university there so I understand that it's a topic that a lot of you guys are interested in and a lot of you guys are worried about not being able to speak French well enough to get into university in Paris so I have already shared this before in a video but actually before moving to France I already learned French I already could speak French as I was attending a French bilingual high school in my home country so I did already have a pretty good level in French I had a C1 level before getting into Sorbonne I was already very familiar with speaking and writing French so I was expecting that I wouldn't have a lot of difficulties being a student in France because I was so familiar with writing, speaking French, but that's not exactly what happened. I remember struggling so much in the first semester of my first year. I just had a really hard time getting used to the whole French education system and understanding how everything works in France, basically. I just had a really hard time keeping up with my native teachers and taking notes and everything just seemed so fast and I couldn't understand anything. So thankfully, I had some really um, loving and kind um, classmates who helped me out when I couldn't understand the thing. Why I'm trying to say here is maybe you think you have a certain good level in French before you move to France and then you actually go there and you're like, I don't understand the thing. Of course now, like I'm in my third year now and uh, I would say I understand like 98% of my classes. Like I have no difficulty taking notes, I have no difficulty speaking, I have no difficulty doing presentations except that sometimes I still feel anxious but that's just because people but when it comes to French I really don't have any difficulties understanding it but um, you really need some time to get used to it and, and obviously you already have to have a certain level before you get into university in France so I did some research and apparently most universities uh, require a B2 level in French for you to get accepted into their institutions so there are actually two types of language certificates that are accepted in French universities it is the DALF and the TFC and they usually require you to have a B2 French language certificate but I think that also a lot depends on what you're actually studying like for my major for example I study communication and it involves a lot of creative writing it involves a lot of speaking and doing presentations and having a more and having like just like a certain vocabulary and um, being able to like come up with things really fast so for my major for example you need a 
language certificate. Yeah, it just depends on what you're studying. Also something else that you need to know is that in France, the majority of programs at universities are in French. The three-year course that I am taking at my university is also like fully in French. All of my classes are in French, except for that one English class that we have where we basically don't learn anything. That being said, I know that a lot of French universities offer English-speaking programs as well, but what you need to know is that most of those universities are probably um, private institutions instead of public ones, so that means that you will probably need to pay a little bit more for the English program so before deciding you just need to be really clear about what your priorities are so if you don't want to leave it up to chance when it comes to studying French I highly recommend you starting to hone your French language learning skills before you actually move to France so if you're interested in studying French there are many ways these days to do that and in this part of the video I would like to thank Lingoda the online language school for sponsoring this video. So if you guys have never heard about them, Lingoda is an online language school that connects students all over the world with qualified native teachers who are helping you to embark on your language learning journey. So Lingoda is currently offering classes in English, Business English, German, Spanish and French from beginning to advanced level. So you guys can all find what you're looking for based on your level in your target language. All of the classes are happening on Zoom and they're really flexible. There are classes happening 24-7 so all you need is 60 minutes out of your day. I actually remember when I was studying French in high school I felt frustrated so many times because I was constantly comparing my progress to other people in class because we had like 30 or 35 people in class and I just remember feeling so frustrated and unmotivated because because I felt like I couldn't progress as fast as other people in class. And if you also have a tendency to compare yourself to other people, really Lingoda is the place for you because the classes are really intimate. There are maximum five people in class and everybody is really nice. And I just wish I had something like that when I was studying French in high school, like an alternative version like Lingoda where I don't feel self-conscious all the time. Finally, Lingoda is currently running their language sprint, which is an intense language learning challenge when you're challenged to take either 15 or 30 classes a month for two months. So one amazing thing is that if you attend all of your classes, Lingoda will refine you from 50 to 100% of all of your course fee. Actually, this intense way of learning a language really help people to boost their confidence in speaking in their target language. And it is also just a really good way to pick up a lot of information all at once. And finally, I actually have a discount code for you guys that you can use to get all of 20 euros or 25 US dollars of your deposit when you sign up for the sprint. So just make sure to check out the description box below. Also just keep in mind that you have until the 1st of February to sign up for the sprint as it starts on the 11th of February. So just make sure that you hurry up to sign up to be able to start your language learning journey today. So when it comes to choosing programs in France, one thing that you really need to keep in mind is that a lot of times it can be a little bit restrictive to choose programs at French universities. So basically in France, in a lot of cases, the classes that you took or the degree that you have from your previous studies have to match the programs that you're actually applying to. So for example, if you studied arts for your bachelor program, but you change your mind for some reason and you want to apply for, I don't know, for example, communication for your master's degree, a lot of times that won't be possible because in France, a lot of times what you actually actually studied before have to match the programs that you're applying for now. So I actually have a friend at Sorbonne and she's actually thinking about leaving France and moving to England because the master that she wants to study is not available with her bachelor's degree in France. So she's actually thinking about going to England now, which is really sad. I'm not actually sure why it's like this and it kind of sucks, but just keep that in mind that if you're wanting to study something really different, 
from your previous studies, you might not be able to do that in France. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is being an international student in Sorbonne. So obviously, as international students, we have a really different way to apply to university in Paris, especially if you are a non-European student. We have a different procedure to follow, and obviously there is also the visa. But I also kind of just wanted to talk about the treatment that I personally, the treatment that I've been personally getting in my um, past three years at Sorbonne because I feel like French people has this reputation of being really rude to foreigners so I'm just here to dissolve all of those stereotypes I guess because I really never had any bad experience with either with French teachers or with French students everybody was always really nice to me as I just mentioned in the beginning of this video when I wasn't able to follow my French classes I actually had some classmates coming up to me offering their help also because I think that French professors know how hard it is for foreigners to study French and to learn French. They are definitely a little bit less harsh on us when it comes to grading than on French students. One hack that I want to share you is that even to this day, every time I have an exam, I write étudiante étrangère next to my name on my paper so that the professor knows that I'm a foreign student. If I have a lot of spelling mistakes, it's because I'm not French. I, I'm trying my best, but sometimes you just can't help it. So just make sure that you make it clear from the beginning that you are a foreigner, that French is not your first language. Make sure that you make it clear to them. You can even go up to your professor after the class and talk to them a little bit, like tell them that you have a lot of difficulties, you're an exchange student or you just arrived to France and you don't even know what the hell is going on. So just make it clear and show that you're trying, show that you're dedicated to get better, but you still have some difficulties. And so the last thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is the dates of the academic year in friends because I think that it's something that a lot of people don't know about but if you're considering applying to university in France it's a really beneficial part of being a student in France. We definitely have a lot more vacation than a lot of other countries when it comes to the academic year. So if you didn't know, the school year starts in late September in France and it goes on until the beginning of June, July. My summer vacations have been starting regularly in May, end of April for the past three years. And honestly, it's pretty amazing considering the fact that we start in September. I go to uni from like, like September until like the end of April and then I'm good for like six months I can do whatever I want so also July and August are considered like the holiday months in France these are usually the times where everybody goes on vacation and Paris especially becomes really quiet and peaceful and empty which is really nice <laughs> and last but not least i wanted to share some personal advice with you guys when it comes to getting into sorbonne because i honestly believe that because the name is so prestigious and the name sounds so big like sorbonne everybody has this fancy idea of what that actually looks like it's not like that getting in is really not that hard like obviously you have to have certain grades and we also talked about speaking French in this video. Being able to speak French is a huge plus if you're a foreigner, but I honestly think that it's doable. I just don't want the name Sorbonne to fool you because <laughs> it's it sounds prestigious, but it's really not that prestigious and getting in is really not that difficult. So just keep that in mind when you're applying. It's not that hard. You can do it. If you put some effort and dedication, especially honing your French language skills, which will not only give you you higher chances to getting into university in France but will also make your study abroad experience so much more rich so much more immersive being able to speak French will really just change the way that you look at the culture and the people not having to rely on google translate all the time so i think that this is the end of this video thank you so much for watching huge thanks again to lingoda for sponsoring this video i will leave all the links in the description to their website and to the language sprint and to my discount code as well so make sure to check out the description box below for all the useful information so that you can start learning french today or any other language that you want to learn if you enjoyed this video please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in hearing more about the learning French and living in Paris and I will see you guys next week. Bye!